Hey there, Wildcat. What you doing? Not important. Why'd you throw a tennis ball at me? We didn't have a basketball, so I stole that from the dogs. Also not important. Um, remember when we filmed a staycation at All Star Sports? Yeah, I remember when the opening footage got corrupted. Look at Wildcat. <laughs> <laughs> All-Star Sports is a value resort and one of the three all-star resorts along with movies and music. It is an average of $160 a night for a standard room here. We got ours for a little more than $130 with our annual pass discounts, but during that peak season, Christmas season, it can get a little bit over $300. However, these are going to most likely be the least expensive rooms on Disney property. And as you guessed it, it is themed to sports. So there are going to be big, larger than life sport paraphernalia around. The five different sections of the hotel are themed to incredibly popular sports. I'm talking football, I'm talking baseball, I'm talking basketball, I'm talking tennis, and of course, surfing. Headed into the lobby. I haven't stayed at All Star Sports since I was probably 12. So this is a fun little throwback moment. We did do online check-in, but our room isn't ready yet. We don't know what section we're in, so I'm gonna ask the cast members if they know so we can move our car appropriately. Alan, quick, which section do you think we're in? Which one do you wanna be in? Football. You wanna be in football? <laughs> I wanna be in surfing. Hee <laughs> hee! Sweet Haley looked in the computer and found a room that was ready for us, so we are in the tennis section. So we were both wrong. We were both wrong, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Good, who's your favorite tennis player? The Williams sisters. Yeah, I'm claiming both of them. Both? I want them, but they're the goats. So do I get to claim two as well? If you can think of two as good as those two. Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. I don't think they're as good as the Williams sisters. They are both equally good in their own respective sports representing their genders. Okay, okay. Uh, also behind Alan, I just noticed how cute, they, they've redone this resort over the years. Look how cute all the characters are playing. We got Mickey playing football, mini surfing. Pluto's gonna play some tennis, adorable. And speaking of characters, we obviously have to do this. Which characters do we want, Alan? Well, everybody, obviously. Obviously, the whole gang. Step onto the star. Here we are. Let's do like a like a sports pose. A sports pose? Yeah. What's a sports pose? <laughs> That's a sports That's pose. That's a sports pose. Nice. <laughs> I had too many things to do in my hands. Yeah, yeah, those same. Yeah, obviously. Same. Yeah. Bye Mickey. Bye Minnie. Before we go move our car, we're gonna check out the rest of the lobby and starting with Sport Goofy Gifts and Sundries, which is the merchandise location here at All Star Sports. Let's take a look around. Like other resort merch shops, you're gonna find a lot of general Disney merchandise that you might not be able to grab. It is very cute, yes. This, this corksicle collection is adorbs. Stanley who, am I right? Oh. They have the new Cinderella ears. Look how cute they are. The clock's almost striking midnight. We're getting these. She's got five minutes based on that clock. That's forever. She's got plenty of time. <laughs> she has she, so girl, much why time. are you rushing? I could do so much in five minutes. I'm never late. I'm always on time because five minutes is so much time. While Molly screws around finding more things that she enjoys, this merchandise shop like all other resort merchandise shops, is going to have some specific resort merchandise that is themed to its resort. But for the All-Stars, you'll find it themed to All-Star Resort in general, so movies, music, and sports. But they will also have some specific sports merchandise, like footballs, basketballs, and t-shirts that show the All-Star legends. Wait, that shirt is so cute. <laughs> Fab Five looking great. But along with resort specific merchandise, you will find more general parks merchandise as well, including the year collection or the annual collection of merch, this year being 2024, which is fluorescent and Molly loves, as well as some various sundry items that you can pick up if you've forgotten things like toiletries. And behind the checkout counter, you can also find some adult beverages should you so desire. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the plethora of candy and treats you can find here as well, along with some of the more standard beverages in the back. 
And if you are a fan of the older Disney shorts, you're going to find a lot of the sports theme shorts posters up top here, like The Art of Skiing, presented by Goofy, Barnyard Olympics with Mickey Mouse, as well as Touchdown Mickey over here in the corner. I think these are so cute. And if you've ever seen these shorts, they are hysterical. I love the ones where Goofy teaches you how to play sports. Uh, that Specifically Goofy teaching you how to play football. Delightful. You know, just when I thought we had a deep cut with the old posters up top, we have this absolute vault reveal of rescuers. Madame Medusa's poncho. And it's the fact that it's shaped like a diamond at the bottom. Wow, that's crazy. That's it. Bernard and Bianca are an underrated duo. Agreed. All right, we have moved our vehicle and are now approaching the tennis building. Hey, Molly. How many tennis balls do you think could fit in that Spalding uh, uh, container there? Yeah, so if you look at how tall this is, do the spatial reasoning for about how big a tennis ball is, consider the volume, the height, the diameter, I would say, I don't know, 9,474,609 tennis balls, give or take. What just happened? We have arrived. Ooh. So let's do a little rapid fire room tour. Again, this is a standard room, so it can sleep up to four guests. Alan, how's the table? It's good, just we're doing the instructions on how to... Perfection, yeah. safety first. Mm -hmm. uh, it can sleep four because you obviously have a queen size bed right here, and then this pulls down conveniently into a bed as well. But for now, it is a nice breakfast nook. We have our Hey Disney here. Hey Disney, tell us a joke. How does Fozzie Bear exercise? How? How? He goes for a walk a walk -a. All right, that was pretty good. I liked that one. That one, that one was good. Well done, Disney. What's the name of the group currently doing research in Dino Land, USA? Dino a. Institute. Dinosaur. C. B. Rascal C. Reptiles. C. C. Dino Institute. C. But I don't need, C. I don't need them to read all this. Maybe you can just poke it. Correct. You can learn more about all that the Dino Institute hopes right, this to do. This is going to go This is forever. We'll just be doing this. Dinos in Dino Land, USA. All right. All right, well, as you can see by our very effective demonstration, there is a Hey Disney, which you can ask to do all kinds of things, like ask it the weather, ask it to tell you a joke, you can play trivia, it can read you a bedtime story, you can ask it basic questions about Disney World as well. So that's fun. I love that they're outfitting the rooms with that. Over here, we've got the bed. How is it? Firm? Yeah. Pretty firm, all right. There's the main bed. As you can see, there's storage under the bed, so you can throw suitcases and things under there. Very cute artwork right here of Mickey, Minnie, and Donald. Some overhead reading lights. Over here, you've got your, I don't know what to call this, no, amenities. Uh, you've got an ice bucket right here with some cups, a little coffee maker with some coffee, including some Joffrey's pods, decaf. Okay, there we go, that's better. Uh, as well as a small beverage cooler. Now keep in mind, it says it will only go to 41 degrees and above, so if you have something that needs to be really cold, like perhaps medicine, talk to the front desk. Dads, thermostat check. And then, as always, a dresser, chest of drawers for if you are the kind of person that unpacks on a staycation or vacation, including, you've got your safe right in here. they're at the park making memories that'll last a lifetime. If not, they're awake now. <laughs> so here is a full look at the room. Not a huge amount of space, but it definitely works. Hello. Hi. What you doing? Laying around. Is it comfortable? It's not the best bed I've ever laid on. All right. It's we... still a bed though. Okay, that's true. That It's arguably a bed. Look how cute it is though in here. It's Huey, Dewey, and Louie, Donald's nephews, and all of their dreams and a lady duck. I believe that to be their mother, Della Duck. Alias, Dumbbella Duck. That is true. Her uncles are Scrooge and Ludwig. And her brother is Donald. Yes, hence nephews, a duck family tree. So cute, they're adorable. Family pond, Molly. <laughs> so as you can see, when you have two beds in here, which it used to be, it did not have much space at all. So I love that you can put that up now and have a little table and then when needed, you can pull it down. It really does make these rooms feel a lot bigger. Uh, for me, when I grew up and stayed in these rooms, we were roped up to park clothes people. We were not 
doing a lot at the at the hotel um and so all star sports i think is perfect for that if you're if you're just using this as a place to hit the hay moving right along into the bathroom section you've got this first section that's got sink iron ironing board hair dryer let's check it out Ooh. um five no four that's not great and it has no attachments but it would do the job there's also this little like mini closet situation hanging situation with some hangers and then of course you have the rest of the bathroom with the royal throne the shower you've got your definitely not h2o products those are definitely brand new different products not things with a different sticker on them and you can section this part off for some privacy and that's your room at all star sports again these hotels are perfect because they are still going to give you the disney amenities like early park entry like transportation you're still at a Disney resort, um, but if you are on a tighter budget or are just looking for somewhere to rest in the evenings, these do the job. And I think these renovated rooms are really cute. But room tour complete, we are headed to go on a little walkabout throughout the resort. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a little hungry. So food is in order. Look at our beautiful view of the All-Star Music Resort and some wonderful Coke bottles. Also, you'll notice adorning the top of all these buildings, a number of different references to the sports that are being played at each of the sections for us, we have tennis, we've got 40, 30 deuce advantage. These are just describing the scores for a tennis match. What, what you looking for? <laughs> the word love. You're looking for love. Looking for it's love like in all the wrong places. <laughs> Look how cute this little tennis court is with Huey doing Louis playing. And then there's Donald, but he's grumpy. All right, first of all, they're playing baseball. I can understand why Donald's a little bit annoyed because Donald's over here trying to play tennis and they're playing baseball. Now, granted, this tennis court is by no means regulation size, but even still, that's no excuse to be playing baseball. There's a different section of this entire resort to do that. Hey, Malls, want to hear some fun math? Always. So, these tennis rackets are 51 feet in height. A regulation tennis racket is approximately 28 inches. It's between 27 and 29 inches in length. Now, that means that if we were following the rule of ratios and the average height of a, you know, American, then it would be, have to be around 123 and a half feet tall to play with that tennis racket. Whoa. Big people. Hey, Alan. Hey, I, Molly. I loved that fun fact. Tell me more. You aced it. I'd say it was a grand slam. Oh, oh, nice. Well, the ace was applicable. Love is applicable too. Yeah, but a grand slam. It's tennis. I guess technically that is true. Right? Yeah. That is, that's a competing for a grand slam. Yeah. There you go. Also applicable in baseball, which is where we will be going. Next up, basketball, where you've got giant basketball hoops and giant balls and giant megaphones and giant whistles. Basically, giant stuff that has to do with basketball. Now, if you'll excuse me, Alan, uh, you may be noticing that there are collegiate pennants up at the top. I do. If you could just hold that for me. Okay, yeah. She's running. I, uh, yeah. Okay. You've been left here with me. Okay, she's not pointing. Oh, there they are, yes, the Clemson Tigers. Right, the Alabama Crimson Tide is down that way. You know, if there was one school in the ACC that was known for basketball, I would say it's Clemson, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> While I have the camera, and before I hand it back to Molly, here's another little fun fact for you. You see this whistle here. Now, if we were to use the rule of ratios like we did before with the tennis rackets, you would have to be approximately 2,040 feet tall in order to blow that whistle and have it be the same size uh, to whistle ratio that you have as a standard human, uh, which is almost a half mile tall. That's because the whistle is 60 feet long, 20 feet wide, and the P inside is nine feet in diameter. That's wild. What we're saying is a lot of big props. Alan, who's your favorite basketball player? Uh, it's either Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen. Isn't Michael Jordan a baseball player? He was at one time, yes. Yeah, I saw it in a movie. He was a baseball player. Who's your favorite basketball well, player? Well, it's tied. I'm so glad you asked. It's tied between Bugs Bunny, who I saw in that same movie, the documentary. Space Jam. Space Jam, sure. yes, that documentary. <laughs> um, and Troy Bolton, of course, who was part of the Wildcats, who I see actually have a pennant up here. 
Yeah, that's definitely for the East High Wildcat High School basketball team yeah. and not for Kentucky. I know. You're right. We have just made it into the surfing section of the resort, which is where the main pool of the All-Star Sports Resort is located. And you can tell that we are, uh, where surfers dwell because of the boardwalk that we are all walking on. A very nice detail. And Molly is hugging what looks to be a wall, but if you were to zoom out, it's just a big shark fin. This shark fin is 38 feet tall. If that was attached to a great white, that would need to be a 300 foot great white. Well, it could be any shark, but I just picked great white because they're my favorite. But more likely, if you're surfing, you're probably great white. You could come into contact with maybe a tiger shack. Uh, those are pretty common, as as seen in that uh, that you know that girl who got her arm eaten, and they made a movie about her. She got it bit by a tiger shark in Hawaii. But if you're in like Australia, it's probably great white. Anyway, do you know why sharks attack surfers? Why? Because if you were to look from below up at a human on a surfboard like this, it is a very similar silhouette to a seal. So often when sharks attack surfers, it's because it's a case of mistaken identity. And five hours later. Now while we're talking about size, these surfboards are also 38 feet in height. And if you were going to want to use that surfboard, you know, to surf as one does, you'd have to be about 41 feet tall, which may seem like it's not as big of a size difference as what you've seen before, but remember we were comparing rackets and whistles, and oftentimes the surfboards are pretty darn close to your height when you're going surfing. I say that based upon math and magazines, having never gone surfing myself. Magazines? Yes, yeah, sports mags. Wow, throwback. Did you sell those for your high school to raise money? 100% to come to this resort and compete. <laughs> what did you compete in? Track and field. Surfing? Pole vault. Oh, where? They have a track and field complex. At ESPN? Yeah. I also ran the 400. Wow. And did triple jump. You're and high jump. And soon you will compete against children to make business decisions with us. All right, without the, without the key context of what my other offer was from Zetas Lapidus, a man with original podcast, that sounds very bad. <laughs> Speaking of Zetas Lapidus, a man with original podcast, Molly. Yes. Quick, who's your favorite surfer on the count of three? One, two, three. Grandpa, Grandpa Kapahala. <laughs> Oh, same person, different name. Yeah, yeah. He is the best surfer slash person. On, yeah, he has in a Hawaii. medal for it. So there's no, there's no better answer. You are incorrect if you answer anyone else. Agreed. Yeah. Sure isn't anybody out of Rip Girls. In the main pool area, it's a little chilly today if you couldn't tell by our attire, so it's not super popular, but this is going to be the big pool that has all the activities, so your trivia, your games, your music, that's going to be right here. We'll show you the other more quiet pool later. I love that they made the maintenance buildings around here look like a lifeguard like shack over there, and then across the way, the bathhouse, that's actually where you can do laundry, but again, themed brilliantly. Splash pool there for your little ones, and one thing I want to highlight that I just love that Disney does so well, like talking about the boardwalk, I say this a lot look down when you're in a Disney hotel or in a Disney park because they use the ground to tell stories and since we are surfing we are at the ocean we are no longer uh, just in a sports complex we are in the sand and you can tell we're in the sand because of all the seashell and starfish prints and then the pool would be your ocean don't you think it's interesting that they chose surfing for the fifth sport here like I looked it up and surfing is not a top 10 sport in the United States or in the world but the other four are I wonder if it's because of proximity to ocean. Maybe, but like, if you wanted to pick another top 10 sport, you could have picked cricket, rugby. Ping pong. Table tennis, yes. Uh, in the United States, NASCAR. Rugby's a little bit too close to football, I would guess. I don't know if Americans know what cricket is. And NASCAR is <laughs> devoted to, I mean, we have like a car. We, we have the car section, yeah. we have NASCAR. So, <laughs> that art of animation. Well, taking a break from our tour, we're going to stop by the Grandstand Spirits Pool Bar and grab ourselves a beverage as we continue to the final two sections of the resort. Drinks have been acquired. What did you get? I got to squeeze the lemon. Oh yeah, the must. So I got the Sports Berry Iced Tea, which is the all-star sports twist on a Long Island iced tea. Now it's a Long Island iced tea with a raspberry twist. So in it, they have rum, vodka, gin, and a raspberry puree. And chambord. Oh, and chambord, you're right. Don't forget the chambord. Adi some additional raspberry. The lemon helps. Is it sweet? Yeah. It's so sweet. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a one and done for me. There's a lot of liquor in there though. That comes in afterwards. So it starts sweet, and then it absolutely really punches you in the throat with the liquor. That lemon, if I could do like three or four more lemons in there. Yeah. 
You'd be in a better place. I'd be in a better place. I went for the Center Court Collins, which is a basketball joke for a Tom Collins. Inside, you will find gin, sour mix, watermelon, and club soda. Oh, I actually, that's quite nice. It's really not sweet at all. It's got a light watermelon, Jolly Ranchery flavor, but the club soda really cuts any too much of the artificial sweetness of it. Uh, the gin, you can tell there's gin or alcohol in there, but it's not like really uh, piney like gin can be. I often think gin tastes like pledge if you don't get a good gin. Um, that's very good and refreshing. I would actually drink that again. Agreed. All right, to football and baseball. You know what? I actually have a really good point now. I was about to say, we made it into the American football section because, of course, football around the world is soccer. Yep. Why isn't there a soccer section? Listen. Isn't I that the most you. popular sport in the world? It is. Weird. We could have a whole Ted Lasso situation. I would have so many soccer players to How list. How many countries are in this country? Four. Yes and no. Uh, I would have so many soccer players to name if we were naming our favorite soccer player. But as it stands, I guess I have to name my favorite football player. I've got two. Do you want one of mine? No, because they're going to be Alabama people. Yeah. Who are they? Tua Tonga Bailoa. Sure. And Jalen Hurts. I choose neither. I do like that that's obviously a Clemson helmet, though. It's purple and orange. Speaking of the helmets, you'd have to be 200 feet tall to wear said helmet. I guess I will say for my favorite football player, it's Sunshine. Trevor Lawrence? No, actually Sunshine from the film Remember the Titans. Oh. Not Rev? No, not Rev, but I do like Gary. Julius? I like Julius. I love Gary Bertier. Gary Bertier? Yeah, those are my favorite football players. Alan? Oh, Ken, also known as. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. He could not keep up with those corners, man. Being he, a DB is tough. But he is Knuff. Um, yeah, my favorite football players are from the, the film Remember the Titans. You want to know a fun fact about me? Of course. I went to George C. Marshall High School, yeah, which played T.C. Williams in the championship game and lost. Is that the one where, like, Alan says, like, yo, don't you take my son out? And Hayden Panettiere's like, he's not doing his threat. And she's like, he's like, shut up, girl. That's and, earlier in the season, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but yeah, great movie. Great movie. No, we're watching later tonight. We're in, yeah, apropos. We are the Titans. Uh, I feel, ooh, uh, I feel good. Do you, do you want to know a fun fact about me? Yes. I learned the two sides of football because of that song. <laughs> strong side. Left side, strong side? Yeah. Strong side. Depending on which defensive formation you're running, they mm -hmm. can probably alter, but that is correct, technically. Attitude reflect leadership. Captain. Captain. Ooh, that movie's so good. Chills, <laughs> chills. Anyway, we're in baseball now, which is America's pastime. Complete with bleachers, as well as a secondary, more quiet pool. And in the center of this pool is Goofy. He's pitching. Look at him go. Well, it, it kind of looks like he's holding a cannon, if I'm being honest, which is dangerous. And he's pointing it at a very large Coke can slash cup. Mostly fun, cup. Fun fact about that Coke cup. Tell me about the fun fact. It would take over 20 million regular sized 12 ounce Coke cans to fill that bad boy. But Disney World sells over 75 million Coca-Colas a year. So that means Disney World guests could fill that cup in just over three months, in 3.2 months to be exact. Challenge accepted. I get it now. Goofy does have a cannon, and that's because in baseball, if someone's a really good pitcher, they say their arm is a cannon. Yeah. That's a good joke. Clever. All right, so as we exit the baseball mm -hmm. section and head to get the delicious food that I'm sure is at the All-Star Sports Resort food court, who is your favorite baseball player? I'm a Braves girly. I grew uh -huh. up in Atlanta. There's the Braves pennant right there, mm. rounding the corner, um, Chipper Jones. Good pick, good pick. How about you? Michael Jordan. I don't really fall baseball, so... Uh, it's a great choice. I'm just gonna great go choice. with... Yeah, yeah, fan <laughs> favorite, I'm sure. Headed into the end zone food court, we did pass the campfire, which happens nightly. Marshmallows, completely complimentary. They have s'mores kits for sale for $7, or you can BYOSS, bring your own s'more stuff, get it from a grocery delivery service, or you can buy it here and enjoy a nice pipe and hot schmo. But we are headed into the food court area. It's very similar to the other value resort food courts. We're gonna have different sections with different uh, offerings. So starting over here, we have a dessert section where you're gonna have hand scooped ice cream and sundaes and things of that nature, as well as a lovely bakery case. 
Moving this way, you've got the Create Your Own Entree, which we saw at All Star Movies. This is typically not on mobile order, heads up. But it's a pretty solid meal where you choose your protein between beef, chicken, shrimp, or salmon, and then two sides, a variety of vegetables and other side dishes. That's a nice dish. There's also a stir fry and an impossible meatloaf. These items are also not always available throughout the day. They're usually only available during the busier times, often the dinner rush. Keep that in mind too. Moving along this way, you've got the market grab and go section, which is gonna have bottled beverages, prepackaged salads, sandwiches, and other snacks. We've also got the burger section, the grill, that's got a couple of different burgers, sandwiches, chicken tenders. And lastly, you've got kind of the, I hesitate to say Italian, but I'd say Italian inspired section with like macaroni and cheese, pizza slices, etc. We have picked up our meal for the evening. I have gotten the bases loaded burger with a side of fries. And Molly has picked up the you pick the entree, which is the garlic shrimp garlic, green beans, and mashed potatoes. One thing I will say, it was, a, it was made to order. Like when I ordered it, they said it'll be five minutes because the chef actually had to make it, make it. So that makes me hopeful. It's perfectly fine shrimp. It's, it's not super fishy. It smells good. It's really garlicky. Really good creamy, dreamy mashed potatoes. And I love how garlicky these green beans are. I think this meal is pretty good. It's definitely shareable. You get a lot of food and I'm surprised by the quality because I don't think you expect to get something like this at the food court. I think you more expect burgers and chicken fingers and pizza and stuff, but if you want something a little bit more home style, maybe a little bit slightly healthier, tiny bit, it's a pretty good meal. Now the base is loaded burger comes with a bacon jam, fried onion, so an onion ring on top, and then some beer cheese. Like stack like a deck of cards. At its core, this is an average burger. We're talking about the patty itself. It's just a theme park burger. But we've dressed it up with a bacon jam that I'll say isn't bad. It's a pretty good bacon jam. Onion ring is crispy. Pickle, nice and crisp, adding that acidic bite. I think the only thing that I don't necessarily know that I'd get again on this burger, should I ever choose to get it, is the beer cheese. That's a little bit overwhelming, pretty heavy. If you just give me a slice of cheddar on this, I'd be a happy camper and say this is probably in the upper echelon of theme park burgers. So, not bad. I don't think anything you get here is gonna be like unbelievable. It's definitely not something you should go out of your way for. There's a lot better quick service food around Walt Disney World, but if you're in the parks at your check-in day or you've come back for a respite or something, I think the food is gonna be fine. And possibly the greatest news, Whoop. maybe in history. History. Yeah, they have shaky Jamaica at the food court, so we grab some. Now, why do we need shaky Jamaican, you might ask? It is because we are headed to Magic Kingdom after hours. We are taking the bus as that is the only transportation option from the all-star resorts. But honestly, I think it's fantastic. It especially allows us to avoid the TTC, which is, you know, my, to be avoided at all costs. My least favorite ride at Walt Disney World. Uh huh. Yeah. The buses will pick you up for all of the Disney parks as well as Disney Springs and the water parks. Uh, they start running an hour before early park entry. So if you are trying to rope drop, you're gonna wanna be out here before that. Usually the buses come every 15, 20 minutes or so. So you wanna make sure that you are out here with plenty of time. Anytime you're using Disney transportation, you wanna err on the side of them running late and needing more time than you think possible. That way, if you that way, if you get there early, great. If you don't, well, you're right on time. Also note that you are the furthest away from Magic Kingdom when you're staying at the All Stars. It's about a 20 minute bus ride. So you're gonna wanna plan accordingly when you're looking at your theme park days. In any case, we are going to queue up and head to the Magic Kingdom for that After Hours event, which is gonna be a different video. So be sure to watch that one. But we'll be back with you after that here tomorrow morning. Good night. Good, Good morning, morning, ma'am fam. fam. We have slept, we are rested, and we are waiting for our breakfast order at Endzone Food Court. And I have to tell you, the most important thing I'm gonna tell you about this entire resort is that specialty coffees, which include shaky Jamaica's, mm. not on mobile order. So we mobile ordered, we're waiting to pick that up, but we had to go in to get the shaky Jamaica's. Beautiful day today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stunning, stunning day today. Did you think that bed was comfortable? It was all right. It was all right. Definitely not the comfiest bed I've slept in. Not the uncomfiest Listen, bed I have slept boy, in. did I have plenty of pillows. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We had all the pillows for both beds. Yeah, that's true. And uh, felt like a king. We have acquired our mobile order. And a wonderful thing about the mobile order is that they can pack it to go if you'd like to take it back to your room. So you don't necessarily have to sit down inside of the end zone cafe if you don't want to, which is what we're doing. We're gonna take this back to the room and have a nice breakfast in the room sitch before heading out. Breakfast acquired, what did you get? I got a bagel sandwich 
with a side of potato barrels, also known as tater tots. I got a kid's meal, as is my common practice at breakfast specifically. Uh, it's two Mickey waffles and you get to choose two sides. I got sausage and apple slices. You could have also done bacon. You could have done potato barrels and then it comes with a drink. So I got the tiny bottle of water. Mm. I love kids meals cause they're, mm. a, a, in my opinion, a better portion of food, a, a portion I'm probably gonna finish. Um, and uh, they're less expensive. So I'm team kids meals all the way. I don't know that there's much better than a Mickey waffle. Mm. Much like all-star movies when we stayed there, Pop Century, pretty much m any of the food court breakfasts are gonna be the same thing. They're gonna be a waffle platter, like a bacon egg platter, some kind of sandwich. They had a tacho bowl, they had um, a vegan like frittata. None of it is gonna be mind-blowingly amazing except for Mickey waffles. Um, and it's just gonna be something to sustain you. Personally, if I'm staying at a resort like All Star Sports, I'm probably trying to get into the park early. I'm trying to take advantage of that early park entry and I'm just staying here as like a place to lay my head. Um, so I would rather just grab and go a snack and then eat something in the parks or go to another resort that has like a fun character meal or something like that. But if you're just looking for breakfast. Yeah, if I'm trying to grab something and go and I'm running, maybe I'm running late a little bit. I probably am. Do <laughs> wait a minute, earlier you said you're on time everywhere. That was because I'm an optimist. Did you know optimists are more likely to be late because they believe they have enough time to get places and get ready on time? I believe that you believe that. I read that once and I've used that ever since. <sighs> In any case, it's good for a grab and go situation. Mm -hmm. Well, that brings us to an end of our all-star sports stay. It was a touchdown. It was uh, an ace, a, uh, a grand slam a slam dunk, or most importantly, it was a hee hee. I don't know what good surfing is. I don't know what you say if someone has a good surf. Are you just like, hey, good surf. I think so. That you sounds fall right. fall down, That's good surf. That sounds right. Good run? Yeah, maybe. Good ride? Maybe. Good surf. Yep. Good That's surf, the one. everybody. That's the one. <laughs> okay, so what are the pros? Where's the equestrian themed room set? That. Saratoga Springs. That. Oh, that's true. There's a whole equestrian. There's an, it's there's an entire <laughs> resort that seemed to the equestrians. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's wow. A great point. <laughs> yeah. Wowzers. <laughs> All right, but as far as this resort goes, what are the pros and cons? Let's start with the cons. Yeah, always start with the cons. Um, I think that if you are looking for a fancy resort with mm. a few more amenities, the All Stars are not going to be it. They're pretty basic as far as what they offer. There's only bus transportation. There's not a lounge. There's not a sit down restaurant. So if you're looking for like a foodie delight, this is not going to be it. I'd also want to point out that this is often the house of the athletes, the yeah. youth athletes that are going to the ESPN uh, wide world of sports. So like the big cheerleading competition, they often stay here so it can get a little loud. <laughs> As far as the pros go, you are able to utilize Disney transportation, which all property folks can't do. And you have early park admission, which is huge for a lot of families. Also, for resorts like this, they're pretty well themed and it gives a lot of open space for younger ones to go around and play. In fact, we saw that happening all day yesterday when we were doing a resort walk around. So that's a lot of fun for some folks. I think these resorts are perfect if you are looking at a more modest budget, but you still want to stay on property and get those perks like Alan mentioned. I stayed here a lot growing up because again, I was a rope drop to park close kind of family. So if you're looking for somewhere just to lay your head and then get up early and get to the parks, I think the Oscar resorts are perfect for that. I do think Pop Century is the best of the value resorts because you get the bonus of the Skyliner and I do like that theming a little bit more, but these resorts are usually the least expensive. And so for that, they are great. And remember folks, we are still working on staying at every resort on Disney and Universal property, so let us know where we should stay next. But in the meantime, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join with the Mam Fam on conversation about this or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. Links for all that are down below. And let us know, folks, down in the comments who you think the better basketball player is. Is it some guy named Michael Jordan, or is it Bugs Bunny? And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And it's been magical. Also, it's Bugs Bunny. Michael Jordan's arm literally stretches. Yeah, but Bugs like gaslight his entire team into doing better. I'm sorry, so we're rewarding gaslighters? They started winning, and obviously it's a trick question that answers Lola Bunny.